world in this shop. But I'm super pumped to make this video. Uh, this is one I've been waiting to make for a long time. In the last video, if you haven't seen that yet, we actually designed a pattern for a leather tote bag. We designed it from scratch and went through all the steps to make it. We kind of designed it actually around this IKEA grocery sack. So we're going to make that tonight. Um, it's freezing in here. I'm going to do it as long as my hands can still move and I think we can get through it together. So uh, let's dive in. So in our last video, we designed our pattern on the whiteboard and I've taken the time to transfer it to this uh, poster board and it looks a little funny. It doesn't look quite look like the pattern I described last time. Um, and that's just because it's only half as big. So really you'll need to make half the pattern um, and then you just mirror it from this point over on your hide. And that just saves a little bit of paper and uh, my poster board wasn't big enough so it's just as easy to make half a pattern as to make a whole pattern. So next, let's talk about leather. Um, I usually like to use about a five ounce hide, maybe a five to six ounce hide. You could use four to five ounce. And I would usually shoot for something in the medium temper range. Temper is just the firmness. It could be soft, it could be kind of more rigid or stiff. This is, is medium. You know, it's got a little bit of body, but um, it's not completely soft like glove leather, but it, it ends up being a really nice bag. But we're gonna make this bag actually inside out. And so at some point, we're going to need to be flipping this bag from inside out back to right side out. So having a leather that's not too firm is going to be helpful in that step. So this is SB Foot, that's the tannery. It's a US tannery. I got this from Maverick Leather. Maverick Leather is a place that I love because they stock some overstocks and some seconds, some blemished hides. So it's a place to go to get some really good deals on some good leather. So what we have here is a side of leather. A side just means it's one half, one entire half of the hide from a cow. So from the top of the back down to the belly on one side of the cow, that's what we have here. So when you get a side, there's gonna be a straight edge. So as I roll this out, the side that's up here is gonna be pretty straight. And that's gonna be the top of the back of the, of the cow. You can see this thing is pretty big. You can see a brand right here. This is on the butt of the cow. And as you kind of move across, this is the belly. <clears throat> this is kind of the front leg area. Here's the shoulder and the neck up here. So this thing is big. This is about 23, 25 square feet. It's a nice big hide. What, what we're gonna find though is up here in the back, um, this is the, toward the back end of the top is called the bend. That's really your best, most firm, tight grain leather. As you get closer to the belly, it's gonna get softer. It's gonna get a little bit more stretchy. This particular one is nice. Um, it's still nice and, and firm looking on the bottom, but the quality of the hide is always gonna be the best up toward the top of the back. So keep that in mind when you're cutting. I usually like to cut the body of the bag somewhere out of this prime stuff up here. If you've got pockets and doodads and things like that, maybe on toward the belly is okay. But the things that are going to be getting a whole lot of wear, it's best to get them cut out from the top. Straps, for example, we would want to cut out from the, the, the very best, most firm part of the hide. Now there are two options with straps. You can either cut straps from this, or you can use a thicker strap from something like a bridal leather, which I have done here. I've cut this out of some, some very thick, this is like thick like you'd use in a belt kind of leather. This is like 11 to 13 ounce. Um, this is, like I said, five ounce leather. And so if I were to use this for straps, I would cut two strips that were one inch wide and I'd glue them back to back and sew them so they're double thick. Five ounce is a little bit thin, I think, uh, to use as tote straps. So what I would rather do is actually cut four here and so when I glued those back to back, that would give me two double layer straps. But instead, I cut these out of my thicker leather. I'll use these for straps. These are 36 inches long. So in our uh, pattern making video, we had talked about the 36 inch length uh, working pretty well for me, as long as you attach them somewhere in the top two inches of the, of the bag. So that's what we've got going for leather. Now we'll lay out our pattern on the leather and uh, we'll scribe it out and actually cut it. All right, so I've got my pattern here, kind of in this choice leather here that we talked about. Um, I know that I've got room here. I'm gonna flip it, I'm gonna mirror it right over this spot. So it looks like I got room for that. So I'm gonna scribe it with this little scratch all. 
And you could use a pen, um, that would work okay. They actually make leather pens that draw silver on leather and they kind of wipe away, but a scratch all, as long as you can see it, that usually works pretty well. So that's kind of what I like to use. I also have these little pattern weights and they're pretty handy. You could use uh, anything. You could use a bag of uh, lead pellets or an iron or any, any old thing just to hold this down. What you don't want is this pattern sliding around as you're scribing it out here. If you're going to be doing the pattern this way, when you get to the halfway mark, I mark a little line there on both sides and then flip it over end for end and then line it up like that and then take a long straight edge and you can lay it on either side and just make sure that your lines are parallel here so that things don't get twisted. So we planned where our handles are going to go and I made some dots here, so I'll just take my scratch all, now that I got my pattern laid on the leather, and just poke through. That'll leave two marks uh, for each rivet. I'll do two rivets per strap here. And then I also want to put a little logo patch here, so I marked this spot for that. It's going to be a little rectangular patch I'll put on here. So I'll make four little dots on the corners there, that'll just give me a little reminder for where I want to place that eventually. So one more thing real quick. As you can see, I, I laid this out in one giant piece of leather. It's a pretty good chunk. It takes up a pretty good swath in this hide here. Um, like we had talked about in the pattern making video, it would be possible to break this up into either two or three pieces if you wanted to. Um, I could have cut it up into thirds, so I basically would have had the bottom of the bag in one piece. And then the, this section and this section, is just, you could have broken that up and taken it out of different portions of the hide. So if you get to the point where you have maybe a little less of your hide left or a smaller hide to work with, you can uh, kind of cut it up like a jigsaw puzzle and um, kind of see where you can get your best cuts of hide out. So cut it out. You can use any tool that you're most comfortable with. I've seen a lot of people use these rotary cutters and they work really well. You can use them in combination with a straight edge. Works nice for these long straight cuts. It's a little harder to get around corners with this, but that's a, a good tool. This is just a utility knife. I like to use this for a lot of things, especially if you keep it sharp by stropping it frequently. You can keep these blades really good and sharp. Um, this is a Japanese leather knife, and this works really well, especially for getting like inside corners, like these little notches that we have in our pattern. So sometimes I use a combination of these three, or maybe even another knife or two, um, just kind of depends on my mood on a given day, I guess. So use what you're most comfortable with and uh, have some fun. So I like to save these little notches that we cut out here to make the leather washers that, that will go on the back side of the copper rivet where we attach the, the handles to the bag. So I like to use a 5 8 inch hole punch to cut the outer diameter and then a 1 8 inch hole punch to poke the hole uh, that will put the rivet through. The next thing I want to do is to skive where the seams will be. And skiving is just thinning the leather so that there's less bulk in the seam. Now if this is your first bag, or if you don't have easy access to a skiving machine or a skiving tool, or it's just intimidating to do by hand, which I definitely understand, don't worry about it. Skiving is one of those nice things. It kind of adds some uh, quality to the bag maybe, but Functionally, if you don't skive it, it's going to come out just fine and it's going to be an awesome bag. So I'm going to do this. I'll show you how I use this bell skiving machine as well as do some skiving by hand with a French skiving tool. Well, that looks like it worked really well on these main edges here. I will use a, uh, a French skiver. This is made by a, a company called Palo Santo Tools from South Korea. walked outside for a minute seven below so I don't think it's quite that cold inside the shop but it's pretty chilly so uh, we'll keep pushing though so we've got it all cut out 
got the uh, edges all skived and I think the next thing we ought to do are punch the rest of our holes since we still have our punch out. So we'll punch eighth inch holes for the copper rivets to go into the bag and we'll also punch the holes into the straps as well. Um, and what we can do at this point too is just kind of decide what kind of end you want, what kind of look you want on the end of the strap. So I have a handful of little templates I've made over time, just different shapes um, that you can put on the end. This can be kind of where you can distinguish the look of your bag because these tote bags, to be honest, if it's just a rectangle of leather and some straps attached, um, they all kind of end up looking the same. So this is one little detail that you could do to kind of distinguish your bag from the rest. So have fun with that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut those out now, poke my holes, and then we'll uh, go over to the sewing machine. Normally at this point I like to burnish all the edges of the straps, but I had mentioned it's kind of cold in the shop tonight. So this uh, this token oil cream that I normally use to burnish the edges is frozen solid. So um, I guess plan B is just to use some beeswax. Thankfully this is a vegetable tan leather. It's a bridal leather from Wicket and Craig. So beeswax should actually work pretty good to burnish that edge. So anyway, lesson learned I guess. Uh, keep the heat on just so you can burnish some edges. attach this logo patch to the bag itself. I made four little dots on there. If you remember back from the pattern, I poked through the pattern onto there so I have a little place to locate this. And I like to use this double-sided tape. You could also use glue, but double-sided tape works pretty well just to temporarily stick it there and it holds it firmly in place while I do the sewing. I also like to use this um, on the top rolled edge. Instead of gluing this, I'll probably just use some of this double-sided tape to fold this over and that usually holds it strong enough unless you have a really oily kind of leather that sort of resists the adhesive. Um, a leather like this that's kind of dry feeling should uh, work really well with this kind of tape. So as we move over here to the sewing machine one thing I want to mention is that you certainly don't need a sewing machine to make one of these. Everything that we do here can certainly be done by hand. Um, in fact I think it's a really good skill to learn even if you anticipate getting a sewing machine someday down the road. Um, learning to hand sew is a really good skill. So um, definitely you can do it either way. Um, hand stitching is a very strong way to do it. Uh, it takes a little more time obviously, but there's it, it's, it can make a, for a really nice bag. Um, having said that, this is a Cobra Class 4 industrial sewing machine. It's pretty heavy duty and it handles things like bags really well. People use this for things like saddle making also. So maybe a little bit overkill for a bag like this, but it's gonna work uh, I think really well for this one. So first we'll sew this patch on, then we'll go to this rolled edge, and then finally we're going to do these vertical seams up the sides, and then the gusset on the bottom, and then we'll be ready to flip it right side out and put the handles on. So we've got our rolled edge sewn all the way across the top, and believe it or not we're on the home stretch here. So we're going to flip it inside out, so the uh, kind of the fuzzy side is toward the outside here. We're going to sew these vertical seams and uh, after we sew these vertical seams all that's left is to sew this bottom gusset. So for these vertical seams we're not going to glue it or anything but I like to use these binder clips. Just put a handful of these along the edge here and as you sew when you get to one you'll just remove it and keep on sewing. And before I get to the very bottom here I'm going to stop about 3 eighths of an inch shy and I'll show you why uh, in a minute. It's, there's a little trick that I've learned that just helps make the bottom of the inside of this gusset turn out a little bit cleaner. Um, it kind of solves one problem when we go to sew this gusset. So I learned this little trick from a guy who does uh, upholstery and things like that. Um, this is just a way to create a little less bulk right in this uh, junction and make it easier to sew over this in the next step. So uh, you can see where I marked that little notch there. I'm going to cut that out and then we will go to the cylinder arm machine I remove the table and that's going to make it just a little easier to get in and around this gusset. But our next job is to kind of pucker this up like this and this having that notch cut out allows us to sew straight across there with, without having to go up and over that seam. So it's kind of a handy trick. 
If you don't cut out that notch, you'll have this seam to deal with. You can go up and over it. Um, you can fold it down to the side and go across it. Um, but if you cut that notch out, uh, I'll, I'll show you how I sew into that. And um, it just makes it really nice and clean in the bottom. So I had the option to take the table off of this sewing machine. So now it's a true cylinder arm sewing machine. And this is where a machine like this is really handy. It's when you need to do some kind of three dimensional work, uh, working in and around um, big things like this, where you need to kind of move at awkward angles. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice thing to have in this case. You can do it on a flatbed machine as well. Um, you just have to really kind of wrestle this in a softer leather or a thinner leather will definitely help you get by on a, on a flatbed machine. A thicker, more firm leather will get pretty tricky. It becomes a real wrestling match. So, um, and you can certainly hand stitch this. It goes uh, really quick by hand. out there except that it's inside out so now all we have left to do is to flip it right side out here's one more look at how that gusset turned out it's a really nice clean way to do it so if you're uh, curious to try it that way I'd say give it a go I think you'll probably like it for the flip we just need to push from the bottom you don't want to pull from the inside mainly want to push from the bottom and just little by little work that all the way through getting there. It's kind of the fun part, isn't it? So every leather that you'll, that you'll use could be a little bit different. This one, like we had mentioned before, does not have any pull-up. If you have a pull-up leather, which is waxy, and it's going to change color when it kind of gets bent like this, it will look very different. Sometimes it's a little disappointing, sometimes it's a little exciting to see what it's going to look like after you flip it, but it doesn't usually look the same as, as it did beforehand. So this leather uh, has just a nice kind of fudge color to it. It doesn't appear to have changed much, but looks pretty darn good. Okay gang, we're almost there. All we've got left to do is attach our handles and I'm gonna use these uh, copper rivets. If you haven't seen the copper rivet video that I had made, um, it goes a little bit more in depth into the tools that you'll need and the process of, of actually uh, attaching the copper rivets. didn't freeze got our bag done I think it looks really nice so this is a super simple bag there's no bells or whistles it's just a good sturdy bag that you could take anywhere uh, this is how the rivets turned out with that washer on the inside I think that's a really simple way to add some strength to that uh, junction um, you just hate for these handles to get yanked on and have that rivet pull through from the inside so I haven't always done that in the past and I kind of regret not doing it when I first started I think it's just a simple thing you can do now to maybe save a headache later. Um, so if you recall, we kind of copied this IKEA bag in terms of the dimensions. So they have a little different look to them, but uh, I think I kind of like the leather one personally. Um, but thank you so much for hanging in there with me on this one. I know it's been a long build process. We got kind of granular, kind of into the nitty gritty on this one. But uh, one of my main goals in making these videos is to make the video that I wish I would have been able to find when I took on a project like this. So if you're just wanting to make a bag, I really hope that you feel a little more equipped to do that, having seen the whole process now. If you do make one, send me a picture, maybe on Instagram. I'm at Claridge Leather, or Claridge underscore leather on Instagram. Um, just let me know in the comments here if you learned something. I also wanna hear if you have a tip. I learned some great tips from other people. So if, if you do something a little bit differently, let me know here, share it with the community. Um, but and as, as always, if you wanna to subscribe to see more videos like this, um, we'll always love to, to have you do that as well. So stay well, take on some new projects. Um, thanks for hanging with me on this one. We'll talk to you soon.